All right, tell me again. The one is a tapered. So this is a tapered. This is this is what Danny Rosen has on his. Not the Rosen. The Rosen's kind of drawn uh, above the okay. Um, the angled one. Yeah. That one. That one's like a south centering screw. So it works great when you when you're taking impressions or when you're doing the uh, the uh, opti split uh -huh. because it self centers uh, the the scan body in, in into it, but. Then you go through the whole process of manufacturing, right? Which is which you're introducing error, and you end up with the holes not aligning correctly. And the the MUA is actually designed to take some of that um, some of that inaccuracy uh, in, into the hole. Yeah. So, and to play so, on the ledge. So this screw. Uh, so what what you see here in the red yep. is uh, basically what the screw channel looks like. So your 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 screw could actually move. Uh, X and Y a little bit, a little bit, so that you could you could kind of compensate for that inaccuracy that you're introducing either printing or milling, right? Okay. But when you when you're using a Rosen screw, you're assuming that everything fits perfectly past it. So uh, if it doesn't, and you're actually, uh, you know, the the the, the Rosen screw uh, screw channel is tighter because it uses the wall of the of the actual uh, screw channel to to engage on the lateral uh, on the on the sides of the of the screw channel to actually come down and, and lock in not a 90 degree seat like you see here right so if you're not completely passive you're putting lateral forces on one of the walls more than the other if because you don't have the chance for it to move x to y well, so then you, if you're just torquing it down eventually one of those screws is going to have a lot of lateral force on the, on the on the screw channel wall and that's why you get zirconia fractures propagated fracture right yeah yeah you're and persuading or pulling over and screw fractures Most screw and force. screw fractures so what about the one on the right the flat better so that's what we've been using for 10 years and no 10 years Yes. How? What about like Powerball? There's a Vortex. There's so Powerball. I think also uses a 90 degree seat platform. Powerball just uh, just has the ability to to use angled screw channels. So it's the head of the screw that uh, it's it's not. So Powerball and right. Vortex screw are are optimized for milling to be able to mill angled screw channels. So okay. those work really well when you want angled screw channels. I thought the bottom of it was rounded though. It is rounded. So that there's a little bit because of... the reason why it's rounded is not specifically for any um, like like angled or or like a Rosen screw is is conical so that it gets friction as you're going down. So yeah. like the, the like power ball is not designed to get that friction. It's rounded so that it's easier to mill with the rounder that connection. Easier to mill it. Okay. Stock. How about the milling strategy? So that's that's what Powerball and the Vortex screws are optimized for, milling strategies, more so than worrying about like this this problem right here that we're talking about. Yep. And um, however, the the Vortex screw does have some conical and self centering um, uh, uh, kind of like a know, taper. Yeah, it does taper have design. a little bit of that. Yep. Um, and so you do have to be a little bit careful with those to make sure that you're getting, you know, um, you're, you're, you're not, you're, you're getting it as accurately as possible. Like data being acquired in the manufacturing that you're doing is going to be, have to be as accurate as possible. The Powerball screw, um, you know, also because of the rounded corners, it's probably going to do that a little bit as well. Um, but if you, I guess my theory is if you mill it, the, the space a little bit bigger, it probably won't try to self-center um, with that milling burr, but then now the bigger problem with power ball screws, the, the screw hole, because it's so big, is is kind of big. Okay. So if you're around the hoosel surface, you're getting... Yeah, you're gonna get a bigger screw hole to deal with. Yeah. So everything has its pluses and minuses, right? It's mm -hmm. not, this is always better than this. I think there ha there's the... The jury is still out on what screw really is the best because the problem that the desk screw has is that you're when you're when you're using it on acrylic, you're it's going to cut into the acrylic as it goes down. So um, it it's 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 more likely to not have a good seat. It might break it into the acrylics too. Soft. Isn't that also harder to uh, to manufacture? When you're in, in a mill, 
for milling strategy to make a 90 Correct. degree turn inside you the well, you prosthesis? Can, you can do it with a, a straight, straight so you, can, you can do, you do it, you have to mill that with a flat, flat and flat, flat and burr, and it can be done, but when you're talking about an angled screw channel, you can't do that with that screw. These aren't for angled screw channels though. Can you make a flat, like a desk, and still have an angled screw access hole? Or can you angle a screw access hole? It's sort of possible, but the problem is getting the screw into that angle and have the right angle on that. You need a spring screw driver. Because the head is bigger, and so I have to be able to get that head around the corner when I get it down. And then how do I mill? I can't mill a little flat screw thing from the top anymore because it's angled now, right? Now you're using like a ball driver, right? Well, but I can't mill the flat point of the seat from an angle, right? And so I need to have another another milling strategy where I'm going up through the bottom and it has a T like drill. Or Something that comes up in and, and rotates around? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the only way to do it. And not every milling system has that capability. So, yeah. Since you got a so screw, it is possible. It's just you have to have the right able to have a, a large stuff to know how to do it. And it's a lot more difficult than say the Vortex screw or the Powerball screw yeah. because in those, they're designed to be able to mill from the top an angled screw channel mm -hmm. and still have a seat oh. for you to work with. So everything has its advantages. I think the desk screw, the two disadvantages is that like, it's harder to get that preload for the screw to be- Longer than the- For the screw to be- um, Yeah. Uh, like by a millimeter. Like tight yeah. and not loosen. And, and then also, the if there's a vertical the offset, the because the screw is long, if there's Correct. a vertical okay. offset, because, because you're able to have a prosthesis, thicker, you're not going to do it. You're going to have more material from um, that vertical to offset. Avoid this it's just going to feel massive either way. Okay. When you screw it down. Okay. Um, okay. So those are those are the things that I would say is not perfect about that screws. No angle screw channels. So then are we trying to come up with something that's a tweener? Something that still has a little bit of an angle? I think we have one. I think everybody's trying to figure out you know, what kind of screw would work best. What is best? Know, yeah. And I think I think some of it is like, you know, Vortex screw, what they did well was they, they release their screw with the milling strategy, right? So if you have a screw, if it's a flathead screw, you have to have a milling strategy for angle, right? And it has, you have to have, you have to design it so it can be actually used with a T. And then you have to work with whatever mills that, you know, have the ability to right. mill with that. Is there any manufacturing in lab that has that kind of functionality with a T yeah, or a, so a I tool? Believe, I believe like the Alan Gerbach, whatever they, they have a T tool, I've seen it. Um, I believe uh, IMS i has a T tool as well. Hmm. You just have to be able to program the milling strategy to include that as part of that. You can't just hand over the screw and expect every lab to have the ability create that milling strategy on their own. Right. That's the problem. Huh. Otherwise, every lab's gonna have to figure it out, right? Like, how do I mill this? Seat? Right. And most labs don't have that capability. But with, with an angle screw channel, the, the driver that you use for an angle screw channel, the, the, intimate, the intimacy of the driver and the head of the screw is, is, is not as good as with straight one. That or, has, it's not, but it, it's just a matter of getting whatever torque rating you need to get, right? Yeah. But if you're, if, if, you know, was ever placing these, because I've heard a lot of, oh, might as well just do all of them angle screw channels so you got perfect screw channels mm -hmm. all the same. Um, but then you're running the risk of, of stripping a screw if you're not all the way down, which is more of a possibility with an angle screw channel than with straight. That makes sense. What's, what's the data on like screw loosening with angle screw channels? Because you're not going to be able to put. Well, you, you more... could still torque them down to the 15, but you just have to make sure whoever's torquing it down has to make sure that if you're feeling that thing slipping, there's probably something down yeah, in that screw yeah, channel. Yeah. You have to make sure that you irrigate it and get it out yeah. so that your driver goes up, down. Well, the question the is, does 15 Newton centimeters give you preload on your screw? Which preload? Preload is the stretching of the screw oh, that's okay. gonna keep it from loosening. From right? loosening back and then, yeah. yeah. So you need preload on the screw when you torque it. And then, then you order, have to wait for a little bit and then do it again, right? In order, well, maybe, not necessarily. Like it's, it's, you have to have a little bit of stretching of the metal material in order for it to be, to know that it's not going to loosen again, right? 
you don't always have to have it to make sure it's not going to loosen again, but that's going to do a better job of ensuring that it won't. So and you want you want it to, right? But, okay. So on the question is, don't they treat the screws with like a oily viscous material or like a liquid to help preload some them? Some companies do. Yeah. Do I, I don't know everyone that does, right? Um, so it's that's that's the other question is like, um, you know, can we like what whose screws are those, right? And do they have angles? option for it yeah and it has to come with that study of you know this is enough torque on this screw to create that preload right but then if if you can create preload at 15 newton centimeters is that screw strong enough is the question too because usually a screw is being tightened on a, a bump into an implant at 35 newton centimeters and that's definitely creating preload mm -hmm. i don't know that 15 is ever on any titanium screw okay is 15 the recommendation for most of these screws? Most prosthetic screws, yeah. Most so so you're kind of dependent on, you're kind of dependent on, um, you know, the the design of the screw. I think what Cliff is talking about, where there's some kind of lubrication surface, lubricating surface on the screw, when you tighten it, so that um, it'll actually go further at the same rating, and the strength of the screw is still there. Um, that's going to give you. A possibly more a better chance of getting that preload and less chance of screw loosening. But screw loosening is 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 nearly because they're like when it's titanium on titanium on most of how it's been right tie bases bars yeah. things like that. When you tighten it at 15 centimeters, centimeters and it's multiple across all the different things, screw loosening really isn't oh, much of an issue, right? Um, so that's why 15 centimeters has been fine. But we don't know if that's still true for. For Holding down a frame. For yeah. For zirconia, because right. we don't know that titanium on zirconia has the same friction as titanium on titanium. Right. Are you familiar with uh, yours? No. So they they use a 5.0 um, MUA as opposed to a 4.8, and their screw uh, is actually thicker. And oh, the titanium, yeah, 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 Uris, yeah, so you can use, but again, if your screw is thicker, it, it, it's going to, it's going to require more, more torque in order to get preload on it, right, and yeah. that's the, pro I mean, they're stronger, what I mean, if they're stronger, can you, you go to 20? Yes, but you have to create, you have to, I mean, 20, uh, is 20 enough for a 1.6 screw, or a 2 millimeter screw? If it's beefier, I guess I would think it screws on better, right? It screws on better, but it doesn't have that preload to keep it from loosening. Yeah, I, I, I used to use those, and I felt like those things were on there. I used to torque they, them. They're not going to break, but yeah. they're, yeah, and you can maybe torque it higher. I guess that's the whole thing. It's like, and then how would you do that for an angle screw channel? You're not going to get 25 newtons of torque on an angle screw channel. That's going to be really hard. Because of the head? Because the thread is too thick and strong now, right? And you're not directly applying the force yeah. anymore. So it's harder to get the same torque on it now. But jury's not out. We're not sure which design up here. I can't, we're figuring I, this out as we yeah, go. We're, this is, there's still, the jury is still very much out. If you had to pick one or the other, you had to go angled or you had to go with a flat? Well, At the moment. For me, price comes into Okay, comes forget into price. As well. Yeah. Forget it. I'm just talking about mechanically. What do you have the best chance of success holding that frame down? Get better at picking your MUA so that you can use straight. Right. And then your <laughs> prosthesis design from the head, from the beginning, getting your screw channel where it has to be and not relying on just... No, no, I want easy, the screw channel. The easy exit. I want the channel straight up and down. I just want to have... If I, if I want to pick one of those issue, two screws. No, price is not an price issue. Price is not an issue today. Um, the the of in terms of just technical design. Yep. I would take the vortex screw. The vortex. Yes. So it's got a little bit of a taper, not as much as a rosin, Correct. but it doesn't have a flat bottom to it, does and it? And it has critically it has up, critically it has the the, um, the, the milling strategies that go with it, the hyperdent milling it. strategies that go with it. it. Okay. So it's if you had a milling strategy with it, that's what I mean. Yeah. You, uh, so if you, you have a, if, you want, for a if you're a lab that wants to implement the vortex screw, that's a lot easier to do because it comes with the milling strategy. It's only available on hyperdent. 
I don't right. know if it's only available on Hyperdent, but I know. I mean, Hyperdent's the most common, you know. Thank you, boys. Software out there. Good right? chat. This has been this has been going on for a while. But if I were to, but for me, if it was, if I mean, there is a price thing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we all care about how much things cost, right? And if if you include that part of it, you know, the desk screw works fine, and it has been working for a long time, and it's been people have been using it for a long time. Mm -hmm. At you know the price that they're selling it at, it's a much better, you know. What are they selling it at? Like nine dollars yeah. on retail, and you can get it for as low as like six or seven dollars. What's a vortex? A vortex, I think, starting is twenty to twenty-five. Powerball. Powerball is around the same thirty-ish. Thirty. Uh, Rosen. Rosen, I think, is fifteen. Okay. Because it's five hundred. But vortex is the only one you get a milling strategy with it if you ask for it. It's right on their right. website or something. Right. No, you have to buy the screw to get the milling strategy. Okay. Yeah. So those are, it's free, I know that, but you have to get the screws, like a certain number of screws. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's, you know. Any other screws out? Off the top of your heads. I don't know of any. Nobel has one. I mean, Nobel has a prosthetic screw. No, they have a screw that they're using direct. That's their normal prosthetic screw because that's milling. Oh. Their because they're, they're milling their normal Nobel seat into their zirconia. WTI has an angle screw channel uh, screw. Uh, it's, I think it's called Gen 30. Uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you any. any yeah, I don't know the it. details about it. Ca not... Camille, I think Camille designed it, and and he gets it manufactured, and you know, he has the he has the uh, the, the the libraries for Exocan to design the screw channel, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but. You know, that's, but he has a screw. That's a what's it, what's this called? Gen thirty. Gen thirty. I don't think I've ever heard of it. I, I think only our clients that that get stuff from us, we recommend them to them when they when they need an angle screw channel. Okay. But um, I don't think he has it out like that. Okay. I don't know why. Cool. All right, boys.